Hey everyone, I'm Yannis Christoulas and if you finally want to know if this mask can increase your aerobic capacity and performance, you first need to know what is the limiting factor of your performance. In other words, what prevents you from running longer and faster. You also need to know exactly what these masks can do to your body in order to understand if this is the missing link of your performance or if it's something irrelevant. In this video, we're going to answer all these questions and take a look at all the reasons why someone would use one of these masks. Let's get started. First of all, we need to take a quick look at all the possible reasons why one would use one of these masks. One, the mask simulates high altitude. Two, it can increase aerobic capacity. Three, it can train your respiratory muscles. Four, it can enhance short-term recovery. Five, it can increase growth hormone levels through hypoxia. Six, it makes your breathing just feel better after using it. And seven, you look cool while working out with them. Now let's start with the first one. You probably already know that although they were initially marketed as simulators of high altitude training, elevation training masks do not simulate high altitude training. The main reason is that they don't actually change the air mixture of the air that you inhale. The air that you breathe through these training masks is the same as sea level air both in content and in quantity. So this cannot provide a stimulus to trigger hematological adaptations such as the ones we see in high altitudes. If you want a more detailed analysis on why elevation training masks do not simulate high altitude, you can see my previous Science Explained video on elevation training masks. So even if they don't simulate high altitude, can we use them to increase aerobic capacity? After all, there are many people that claim that we can. In the past years, there have been 9 studies on the effects of elevation training masks on performance. None of them showed a greater increase in performance compared to traditional training protocols and 4 of them showed significant reductions in performance improvements in comparison to traditional training. More specifically, Romero Arenas and colleagues in 2018 found that during an incremental cycling test, wearing the mask significantly reduced peak power output which means that the subjects had a huge reduction in their performance. In addition, Hemdall and co-workers in 2018 tested the effects of training with and without training masks and concluded that training masks can inhibit improvements in aerobic and anaerobic endurance compared to standard training. A third study from Jagim and colleagues in 2017 showed that wearing an elevation training mask can negatively influence ratings of alertness and FOX for task. And finally, Lopez Perez and co-workers in 2020 examined the effects of wearing a mask during a cycling test to exhaustion. They found that the mask caused a reduction in the time to exhaustion and that subjects reported higher rates of perceived exertion and breathing discomfort. They concluded that elevation training mask induces psychophysiological alterations affecting the exercise tolerance and limiting performance. These are very important findings that actually prove that training while wearing this mask can actually reduce your performance. This means that the mask will force you to train with less intensity and volume, which will eventually lead to less adaptations and gains. The five remaining studies have shown that training with the mask doesn't lead to greater performance improvements than conventional training. So 100% of the studies that have been done on these training masks have shown that using a training mask while training will not provide more results than conventional training and it's very possible that it can even inhibit your progress. Still, many claim that they increase their performance through the use of this mask. The personal story of a person doesn't serve as a justification for the use of the mask for many reasons. One, if you train with a mask, let's say for four weeks and so in increasing your performance, how do you know that you wouldn't be better if you had trained for the exact same period in the exact same way without the mask? There are very specific conditions in which you can check if an actual change has occurred. And this is why in all the studies I present you, they had one group do a training regime with a mask and one other group do the same training regime during the same time period without the mask. This is the only way to compare results. Second, 
Note that no one claimed that you will not increase your performance, but only that you will not gain more than training without the mask and it's very possible that you will gain less. In other words, if you buy this mask and start training, you will increase your performance. But if you don't buy this mask and start training the exact same way, you will get at least the same results and it's very possible that you will even get more. In my experience, the people that claim to have gotten better with this mask usually compare the condition of training with the mask to the condition of no training at all. And finally, you wouldn't know if you trained harder with a mask just because you feel that you're doing something more sophisticated. In summary, there has yet to be any scientific evidence to support the idea that training with this mask can increase your performance more than traditional training and all the existing studies show the opposite. Number three, can you train your respiratory muscles with elevation training masks? Studies have shown that yes, you can use these masks as respiratory muscle training devices and strengthen the muscles of respiration. More specifically, Porcari in 2016 and Sen in 2019 found improvements in some performance markers of the respiratory muscles. This is very important because this is the actual use of these masks. They can improve the strength of your respiratory muscles. So why can't you increase your aerobic capacity by strengthening your respiratory muscles? This is because, especially for non-elite athletes, the strength of your respiratory muscles is not the main factor that limits your performance. So what prevents you from running longer and faster? When you stop running, you stop mainly because of the inability of your body to consume oxygen. Not the lack of oxygen in your lungs, nor the strength of the respiratory muscles to draw air and oxygen. You have already plenty of oxygen in your lungs that you cannot consume. Just imagine that your body consumes 25% of the oxygen you inhale while resting, 50% while on medium intensity exercise and up to 75% in maximal exercise. So even in maximal exercise, you don't consume all the oxygen that you have available in your lungs. Therefore, the basic limiting factor of your performance is the inability of your body to consume more oxygen and not the strength of the respiratory muscles. And how you can get better at that? Just run longer and faster while breathing normally. But this is where it gets really tricky and most people probably decrease their performance with the masks. Let's say that you're running. Your running is the training stimulus that makes you better at consuming oxygen. But which part of it? Mainly the speed and the duration. The faster you go and the longer you run, the better the training stimulus is. If you start running with a mask, you make it harder for yourself, so you decrease your speed and duration in order to do something else, which is respiratory muscle training. Remember that many scientists found a huge decrease in the ability to perform while wearing these training masks. So without knowing, you decrease the stimulus that is important to get better at what limits your performance, which is oxygen consumption, to get something else, which is respiratory muscle strength. Also, note that respiratory muscle training devices are not the only way to train your respiratory muscles because they are already training with normal training. So who can benefit from respiratory muscle training? Of course, patients with chronic pulmonary disease, which is why respiratory muscle training devices were initially made, and elite athletes that have exhausted all the other means of improving their performance and are searching for slight improvements that can make a difference. But even they do not use the training mask for their respiratory muscle training. Wanna learn why? Elite athletes would never decrease the intensity and volume of their training program over respiratory muscle training. So what they do is do their training while breathing normally and then in a completely separate moment they do their respiratory muscle training with devices that are more established and well studied than elevation training masks. These devices have a very big span of training intensities to choose from and a very accurate mechanism of increasing intensity which is crucial when designing a training program. So elevation training masks are respiratory muscle training devices but they are probably not quite good at it. Thus, even if you want to train your respiratory muscles, you should do it separately from your normal training and in my opinion with more sophisticated devices. Another thing that some supporters of the mask claim 
is that it can enhance short-term recovery. Hayden in 2017 examined the possibility that training masks can enhance short-term recovery through a rowing interval training protocol in seven trained males. She concluded that the use of the training mask during short-term recovery does not improve rowing performance, blood lactate, heart rate recovery, stroke volume, cardiac output, or heart rate variability during interval training. He reported that contrary to anecdotal reports, the implications for the training mask to enhance short-term recovery are not supported. So we definitely can't say that training masks can improve short-term recovery. The next up is the allegation that training with a mask can increase growth hormone levels through hypoxia. At the time that I'm making this video, I can see a section on the mask's website with the name Strength Training Under Hypoxic Conditions Significantly Increases Serum Growth Hormone Levels. This comes with a reference to a study underneath it. The funny part about this is that this study is completely irrelevant to the elevation training mask simply because they didn't use one. In this study, Kurubi and colleagues used hypoxic gas mixture in order to simulate altitude corresponding to 2000 meters above sea level and not an elevation training mask. So I don't see how this study is related with the website's product and why it is cited on the section that is supposed to prove with science that the mask works. To my knowledge, there are currently no studies to prove that training with this mask increases serum growth hormone levels, so there is no evidence to support that too. Besides all the studies and plain logic, there are still many people to claim their breathing gets stronger and deeper after using this mask. I think that it's quite obvious that if you restrict your airflow to the lungs by any means, you will feel your breathing much better once you take it away. Making it harder doesn't necessarily mean that you made it better. So just feeling better after taking the mask off doesn't prove anything about its efficiency as a training device. The only thing on the board left is looking cool while working out with a training mask, which to be honest, I think it's the only case with this device. And one last thing, most of the good training devices that we have today were made as a solution to a problem. This means that coaches and athletes had a practical problem with applying their training and new devices were created to solve that problem. These masks were not made to solve any problem. They were initially made probably because they were looking fancy and because they knew that they would sell and afterwards people tried to find a reason for using them. It's the exact opposite procedure of what it should be. To conclude, with the data and the knowledge that we currently have, I believe that there is no reason to purchase and use one of these masks. For 99% of the people out there, just running longer and faster will make a huge difference in their performance and there is no need for training masks. So that was the video guys, I hope you found it helpful and if you do, make sure to hit the like button. I will be making more Science Explained videos on various topics, so if you don't want to miss out on them, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.